Hi everybody and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint Fishing with Dad. We're working on a 16 by 20 canvas using the following colors. White, green gold, yellow ochre, neon orange, magenta, and black. I've also got some ultramarine blue that I'm going to be using as well. Look for the full list of colors and brushes below this video in the description. I'm starting off with a number 30 filbert brush and I'm just going to come in with the light green gold and yellow ochre along the bottom for the bank that they're sitting on. And I want to mention that the full length, if you're interested in watching the full length tutorial of this in real time, step by step, uh, it's available for patrons. So I'll leave a link below if you'd like to join Patreon for as little as $5 a month. And I'm going to just start working on the distance now, creating that perspective without washing my brush, just taking a little bit of all four of these colors, the blue, magenta, green, gold, a bit of yellow ochre. I'm gonna come in and really make this feel like a September, October-ish uh, fall time of year. So I wanna make some nice warm jewel tone colors back there with little hints of neon orange and that beautiful blue mixed with white a little bit later. So I'm gonna be tapping in lots of different colors for the foliage, uh, working on creating complementary colors here that play off of one another, the orange, the yellow, the purple, the green, um, and the blue, of course. So I really love the way uh, sunset looks on, or like an evening nightscape or in seascape looks on a black canvas. It can be really, really uh, dramatic. So that's why I'm using a black canvas. I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video, actually. Um, but you can definitely do this on a white canvas or a gray canvas. Um, I'm sure there's other options out there, so don't think that you can't paint this if you don't have a black canvas. And all I did was paint over an older painting with black paint. I'm coming in with my warm colors straight up and down and across to make that feel like water and there's ripples and there's reflections in the water from above. So it kind of, you kind of get that crisscross um, pattern to the water, um, but you really want to have some uh, thicker and brighter uh, ripples that go straight across horizontal rather than vertical keep the ones that are vertical a little bit softer and uh, less indistinct and a little bit blurrier looking so I'm just going to keep layering over still using that large filbert brush and using my, all my warm colors to begin and then I'm going to be coming in with my magenta and my blue now what I want to do is create really bright highlights down here at the bottom, tapping, and then short little tiny flicks for those uh, sunlit golden little blades of grass. I'm gonna now tap in some more of the foliage and background colors here. And I'm going to add another layer of highlights using more white this time, a little bit of green gold. At times I'm going to use a little bit of neon yellow warm that I haven't added to my palette yet, but I will be soon. Again, look for the full list below this video in the description area. Any of the neons that I use are from Holbein. They're luminous neon acrylics. They're a wonderful brand and they dry with like a beautiful suede velvety finish to them, which also enhances the painting when you're working on a black canvas. So that's what really makes this painting pop. And I'm just going to scumble around, turning my brush flat and just kind of dragging and letting all those shadows um, stay there from the black canvas and just creating little pops of highlights and colors. Now in with my magenta blue, a little bit of white, and um, there's probably a little bit of orange in my brush too. I'm gonna keep that in there because that's a fall color and I just think all these colors look really pretty together. The orange I'm using right now is more on, a, on the red pinky side, so it actually looks really pretty when it blends with the blue and the magenta and even a bit of white. It has more of a pinky reddish tone to it, which I really love. So you can see here what I mean about colors playing on one another. See how that orange and the violet I made looks really pretty together. So that's something to think about when you're working on a landscape. Uh, and if you're not sure about complementary colors, you can get a color wheel and that does the work for you and you'll just know exactly what colors will work together if you're having trouble with that in the landscape. 
and I'm going to incorporate all those beautiful colors in the water and the ripples. And you can see here I'm just taking my orange with my magenta and I'm creating a really gorgeous color. So lots of jewel tones. This is really about jewel tones and also, you know, some kind of moody, subdued colors as well, just to give us that calm um, evening feeling. And uh, I just thought this would be with, I don't, depending on when you're watching this, it is getting uh, a little bit closer to Father's Day. So I thought this would be really suitable for Father's Day. Um, but it's really uh, one of those things that um, is suitable for any time of the year and certainly for uh, anybody in your life. I think this is just one of those pictures that is nice to look at and everyone can enjoy. Of course, it holds a special place in my heart for me having two sons and I remember uh, us taking them fishing when they were little boys. And I'm coming in now with a bunch of ripples with white and neon yellow warm. I want to really build up the light on the on the water now so I'm going to work my way up to creating that sparkle effect those little diamonds that twinkle and sparkle on the water they're going to be little mini stars and I'm just using the edge of my brush now I forgot to mention I switched over to a flat brush uh, you could use so many different brushes for this painting though so uh, don't worry if you don't have the same brushes I'm using uh, you can use a round liner even a filbert uh, Fan brush would work really well for foliage. So filbert, mop, fan for foliage, guys. If you don't have the large, large filbert that I'm using, any filbert will work. Uh, stipple brush for foliage. Uh, what I find really easy, though, for ripples in the water is using a flat brush. Um, sometimes I just get a little bit lazy, and if I've already got the filbert brush in hand, then I just keep using it. But it, if, if you're a beginner, it's probably going to be a lot easier for you to get those straighter lines and ripples in the water if you have a flat brush because of the, the straight flat end to it, of course. So I'm just enhancing the colors now. I'm going to come in with my cool shadow tones. And because they're complementary, of course, I'm going to add them to the water and right in between all the orange and the yellow that we've got going on there. And then uh, pinky hints from the magenta and the white. And then the magenta, the blue and the white combined as well. All those colors are going to work so nicely together for this painting. With a liner brush, I'm coming in and creating all my little stars now, little dots and dabs. Uh, kind of just really make it random and sporadic so you don't create too much of a pattern, otherwise that won't look realistic. And then what I do is just tap and kind of uh, blend out a little bit just to make it look blurry and hazy so we have that nice soft magical glow around each one of them. So after I finish adding a few more sparkles here in the water, what I'm going to do is start working on the sun. And it's going to be a small little sun. I'll be using a couple different brushes to create the little sun rays or sunbeams. And I happen to be using a small filbert right now. So you can either use a filbert or a flat brush. And I've got a little bit of white with my neon yellow warm, but mostly white. And I start in the middle and it's like creating a star but it's gonna be larger than the ones that we worked on in the water. So that's why I switched my brush. It's easier to use. And when you make your sun rays, make them a lot skinnier and pointier from the center point and then make them start to come out wider towards the end. So that just creates more, uh, it, it makes it look a little bit more realistic and it creates more of a mood and sunbeam effect for your painting. So we're gonna have that kind of just fading away on either side, brightest in the center of course, and I'll be coming back to that a little bit later on, adding more white and more of my orange and yellow. Now I'm gonna start working on the little boy's hat, uh, or it could be a girl, and I'm taking my green, gold, and black. All I'm doing is just picking any color on my palette to tint my black with. 
um, at this point. I don't want to use white though. I don't want to make gray. So I'm just using a little bit of green gold. I will be adding a little bit of yellow ochre as well. And I wanted to make sure looking at a reference photo that I lined the hat up with uh, uh, the dad's shoulders. So that's why as soon as I finished doing this part of the hat, I go right over to the shoulders and add that in because I don't want to forget about that. I want to make sure that um, the proportions are proper, the height is proper in this. Um, I guess I'm more concerned about like the height because when if I get the height right, then the proportions kind of just um, flow easily after that and everything will look uh, proper. But I'm not overly uh, working any details for the figures in this photo. If you guys have been following me for a while now, you know that uh, I don't really do portraits or figures very often. That being said, I have been practicing and having fun because you guys seem to really be liking it. So if you guys are going to watch, then I'll definitely... Uh, share more and make more videos and tutorials for you guys but by no means am I a portrait artist and I don't claim to be one so I'm just doing everything very impressionistically loosely and uh, a lot of silhouettes because it's um, really forgiving to work in silhouettes uh, so I'm gonna add the folds in his little vest here uh, just with a little bit of black to begin later on once I get their proportions down and the figures uh, set there and I'm sure about how I want everything to look, then I'm going to concentrate on having fun and playing up the color. And I'm adding a little bit of shadow down here, and then I'm going to come in, add a bit of white. It was too light, so then I went and made it a bit darker. I will be adding a little bit more highlights and color to that later on, like I said. So I'm just working this a little bit just to see what looks better, having a more of a highlight or more of a shadow there. Uh, it's completely up to you. It's personal preference. Um, but the shadow, you want it to be a bit on an angle because he's turning on an angle and he's kind of got his, he's in the motion of either casting out his rod or maybe he's got something on his line. So he's kind of twisted and um, I'm going to be using, I forgot to mention the colors I'm going to be using. Of course, you guys already know because you've seen the thumbnail and you've seen the finished painting, but I really wanted to keep the complementary colors and make this painting uh, all work together really well. So I went over with little brush strokes of blue, magenta, a little bit of white in there, and I kind of started to stay away from the black because I think that there's so much more life to art and a painting when you choose color over just black um, but there still is black there it's just tinted um, if that makes sense with black and magenta so we've got all those colors we've got the green in here and which of course is complementary to purple and the magenta so I'm gonna finish up the figure down here a little bit more do the shadows of course the little fishing rod and it's kind of just tucked in his right arm there. We can't see the bottom of it. And his little knees or his legs on either side. And don't be intimidated at all to approach this, guys. You can definitely do it. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. A less is more. So when you're approaching the limbs, um, try to just do them smaller than you think you should. So that's I mentioned that when I'm when I'm doing these tutorials for you guys uh, I when you, when you start out painting figures and portraits the biggest mistake artists will make beginners will make is painting everything much bigger than it, it really is um, and I learned that myself and I'm, I'm still working on that so if you make everything a little bit smaller approach it smaller than you think that you should you've got some room for making it bigger later on if you need to but it's a little bit harder to scrape that paint off the canvas especially acrylic because we know that acrylic dries really really fast so uh, just approach it and if you want sketch something out first use a traceable if you want uh, this is just how I prefer to do it I love a paintbrush in my hand and I like the feel of it I like to apply paint and I just taught myself that's how I, I started um, I'm a self-taught artist so that's the only way I really know and it's the only way I really could feel comfortable with it would feel really awkward for me to sketch something out first so here I am going into the color now bringing out that violety color with the magenta the cobalt blue 
and white. Um, you could use phthalo blue with magenta if you want. You can mix pink with blue. You could use full-on purple if you want. Um, these are just the two colors that I looked at first and just grabbed them because I knew that they would work. But there's a lot of different combinations that you can go with to achieve the same effect and jewel tones for this painting. So I'm going to add some more highlights in the water after this. More stars, create more contrast, warm glow with my neon warm yellow. Again, it's by Holbein. I'm just tucking in a little bit of that water and highlights in between his neck, shoulder, and his fishing pole. And I'll be adding more stars and highlights, like I said, in the water. A little bit more color to the sun rays with my uh, neon orange and my neon yellow warm. And that's about it, guys. Uh, there's not too much to this painting, so I really hope that I've inspired you and you guys are going to try this one out yourselves please share it on the Facebook group. I love seeing your versions from my tutorials and paintings. Uh, it's always a joy for me. I really look forward to it in the morning when I'm having my cup of coffee. So I want to wish you guys a wonderful day. Happy painting. Thank you so much for all your support and joining me today in my studio. Look for links below for Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.